Oi. What crazy market. So we got to talk about quite a few things today. Um, want to talk a little bit about what's happening right now with the coronavirus, COVID-19, as it is called now. I uh, want to tell you, talk to you about of what's happening in the markets and what we can do right now, right? I mean, is this the bottom? When will we see the bottom? When can we start buying stocks again? Uh, or should we go in cash, in gold? That's what we're going to talk about today, as well as these limit moves. What, what does it mean if the markets are going locked limit? So we have a fun-filled session ahead of us, and we are about to get started. I just wanted to make sure that you can all see me and hear me. So right now I'm coming to you on full screen and in a little bit I'll share the charts with you so that you see exactly what I'm looking at as well. But let me just ask my team really quick if uh, everybody or ask me, let's, let me ask you if you can hear me and see me. If that is the case, we are ready to rock and roll. So um, team, how are we doing? Are you guys? It's always a little bit awkward because there's a, probably a 12 second delay between uh, between seeing your answers to my questions. So there's this weird 12 second pause. <laughs> Anyhow, getting started here. All right, <clears throat> good. Everybody says we are good to go. All right, in this case, let's get started. So. Let's talk about uh, what everybody is talking about right now, the coronavirus or the COVID-19. See, I want to give you just for a few minutes my take on this and also my predictions because it is on everybody's mind. So let's start. Here are my predictions. Number one, what is going to happen? Things are going to get weird. <laughs> as if they couldn't get any weirder as they are right now. And uh, then they will get better. See, this here is a new virus. It's contagious. It, it gets a lot of people really sick and, and people die. And, and this totally, totally sucks. And the markets will remain crazy for a while because right now we don't know the whole economic impact of this situation. We, we don't know how long it will last and it, when it will be over. You see, right now, most airline stocks are down 70% or more. Most restaurant stocks are down 80% or more. Disney World is closed. Broadway is closed. Las Vegas is closed. I can remember when the last time Las Vegas closed. All major sports events are canceled and the list goes on. And, and in addition, as you know, Saudi Arabia and Russia started an oil war and uh, this oil war impacts our oil and gas industry so so many oil and stocks uh, many oil stocks are down 50 percent or more and you see this is the perfect storm what we are experiencing right now so that's why i say things are going to get weird but then they will get better so here's what everybody is going to do uh, people are going to continue to panic as they do right now, and then they'll stop. See, people will panic for, for two reasons. First, because this is a, a new virus, and it's, it's pretty nasty, and that's pretty scary. And when people are scared, they do irrational things, like, like buying toilet paper for the next six months. And second, people are panicking because of the media, specifically social media. You see, with traditional media, you, you already know how it works. If it bleeds, it leads. And, and that's why the news is always negative. And the news, they're feeding into the panic. Uh, the, the traditional media gets paid for views and nothing drives views like fear. You see, and social media is even worse. It seems that on social media, everybody is an expert and, and many people are contributing to the panic and fear, sometimes without even knowing it. They might share something that they have heard or read and they want to look smart, so they might be sharing something without checking the facts. And, and that's how social media works. It's kind of scary. See, that's why I'm saying people are going to continue to panic and then they'll stop. So what does all of this mean for us? It means that if, if we, you and I, remain calm, this can be a great opportunity. At some point, the craziness in the markets will stop and then there will be some fantastic opportunities, especially 
when you know how to trade options. Interest rates will drop even further. I mean, right now we're already at 0%. We might actually, for the first time in history, see negative interest rates. And more and more money will be pumped into the system. Money will be cheap. And it will get easier to get money both personally and for your business, which could be your trading business. You need to learn how, to, how this game is played because then you will see that this can be a massive opportunity to make a lot of money. And uh, I did a video on this of how to take advantage of a stock market crash where I talk about cheap money and how to get it. I'll link to this video in the description though so that you can see it. Now, in the meantime, these markets that we are seeing right now are great to trade with the Rockwell power spreads. Because over the past few days, I received many emails and comments from you on how you're making money with this strategy. And that's awesome. <laughs> Keep doing this. You see, when everybody else is panicking and wasting their time on social media, learn how to take advantage of this once in a century opportunity and get ready to crush it. So here's what I'm doing personally. I, I'm, I'm washing my hands and I'm keeping my immune system strong. Number two, I'm also not paying attention to anyone other than non-biased expert health organization. And I will put a link to my sources where, where I get my information from. It's from four websites, actually. I'll, I'll put them in the description so that you see where I get my information from. And uh, these are reputable resources like uh, Harvard, uh, like the John Hopkins University, the CDC, and also the World Health Organization. And uh, they do not try to make us panic, but they they provide good advice. And, and here's the third thing that I'm doing right now. I'm getting ready for this opportunity. See, I'm, I'm super picky when it comes to trading stocks and options because markets are still crazy, but eventually they'll come back to normal. During craziness and panic, like right now, I'm super picky. And, and I am trading the Rockwell power spreads. They've been fun to trade for the past few weeks, even during this craziness. And this week, I've also been looking for new apartment complexes to invest in, especially with interest rates dropping and money becoming cheap and available. I, I want to make sure that I'm in the best position to take advantage of this opportunity. <laughs> See, I can do anything about this situation other than follow the, the basic common sense instructions that actual doctors are giving us. Wash your hands, strengthen your immune, immune system and stay away from, from large crowds. See, here, here's what I can do. I can get ready to take full advantage of everything I just mentioned. Okay, so that's it. Uh, we, we are going to get through this. Uh, obsessing over it, worrying about it and, and panic for me, that's all optional. And I suggest that you opt out of that and, and stay focused, focused on what you can do. All right, hope that this helps. Uh, let, let me ask you, is this helpful? Because if it is, then click like or, or leave a comment so that I know that this is helpful. And I'll do more videos like this, anyhow. <laughs> so I also wanna talk about the, the stock market, <clears throat> okay. So we'll see, it seems that uh, we were not able to go today live on Facebook. Okay, anyhow, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. I will also talk about all your, all your questions here in just a moment, but right now I wanna talk about what's going on. <clears throat> so let, let's talk about the stock market. Today is March 18th and where do we stand? Let me actually go right here to the charts. That is not what I wanted to show. I want to go to the primary display. Here we go. So here we see the charts. Let me actually do this. This is the Dow Jones that we are that you're looking at here right now. Uh, hold on, need to move this away. So as you can see, today, we are down another 6.3%. Here's the interesting thing. Going into the close, we actually bounced back a little bit, which is good. So let me just zoom in a little bit and show you exactly what happened. So here's the daily chart, the Dow now well below 20,000. That happened today, we dropped below the 20,000 mark. So um, let me actually show you a three minute chart. And you see on a three minute chart, we went down, down, down for most of the day. And then there was finally some buying into the close. So because I wanna show you 
uh, a few things. So let's zoom out because one of the key questions that everybody has right now is how long will this last? When do we find a bottom? So I'm going to switch here to a weekly chart. And on this weekly chart, I'm going to zoom back out until we are actually going all the way back to, um, to the crash. There we go. In 2009. So here's the deal. Here is how it works. You can just use some basic technical analysis, like drawing a trend line. Here we go. So we draw a trend line from the low here. We're capturing what happens here in 2015 and 16. Okay. And then we go right there. So you see, we capture one, two, three lows. And this is when I did a video a few days ago, I told you I expect the market to go down to 20,000. Well, this is exactly what I saw here that we will be at around 20,000, but we broke below that today. So that's kind of scary. Let's take another look at the chart. Uh, so there's another chart formation that you might have heard about. It is a so-called megaphone where you're using a few lows that you're connecting like this one and this one, and you're drawing a megaphone like this. So we also do the same thing right here, uh, going from the top. This is why the chart formation is called a megaphone because it has two connection points here, then connects the high and then it connects the low. And as you can see, we all already touched the lower trend line of this. So here's the deal. As you can see this today, we went to the lower trend line of this megaphone and then bounced back. That could be a good sign because we already broke through the trend line that we could go uh, draw going back to 2000, right? I mean, this is here, um, yeah, a trend line that was broken. And if we continue to break below this level here, below 19,500 and close below 19,500, then we are in uncharted territory. Overall, we are right now officially in a bear market, as you know, because we already lost 30%. So where do we find the bottom? Well, as you know, let me, let me just remove these and also go back to a daily chart because what I like to do is I like to look at three indicators and the three indicators that I like to look at is the RSI, stochastics and MACD. And as you can see, ever since we started going down, none of these indicators that are down here at any time dipped below the 50 line. So here we are still showing that the market is more likely to go down. So this is of course now a question, should we buy, right? Is this a, or are we in a financial crisis? How much worse can it get? And you see, this is, I think, very important. Let me come back to you on a, on a full screen here for a moment, because People think that we are in a financial crisis. My opinion, no, this, what we are seeing here right now is not a financial crisis. This is a health crisis with a very severe impact on the economy. So do we have a financial crisis? No. Do we have a health crisis that is impacting the economy? Absolutely. Here's the difference. During a financial crisis, as we had in 2008, as we had it in 2000, companies are shutting down permanently. Right now, as of March, 8, March 18th, companies are shutting down temporarily. However, here's the challenge. If we don't get over it quickly, then some companies might shut down permanently, which leads to unemployment, which leads to a recession. So. Right now, the key is to get over it rather quickly, because let me show you some examples of some companies who are in danger of shutting down permanently if we don't give them any stimulus plans, as you know, which has been announced, maybe possibly some bailouts, because I want to show you a few things that are quite scary. Let me come back here. So one of the companies that definitely is in trouble is American Airlines. You might have heard about this. So American Airlines, if you look at this, let me just show you, went down from $30 all the way down right now to what, $11. So down, as you can see, 70%. That is way more than the overall market. So keep this in mind, 70%, for example, for American Airlines. Uh, let me remove this and let me just go to the overall market so that you see how we are doing here in comparison, the overall market right now, as of today, 
down 36%. So American Airlines down more than twice as much as the overall market. Okay, uh, let's look, take a look at another one. Airlines obviously being hit. So United Airlines is another airline being hit hard here. If you look at what's happening, uh, went down from, uh, what do we have here? $90 all the way down to $21, so down 75%. Then you might have heard it, especially today, Boeing got hammered. I mean, Boeing, America's darling, a stock, a, a Dow stock here, a look at this, went all the way down. Today alone, 22%. So here it came down from $300 to $92, down 75%. So uh, let's take a look at a few other companies here. Um, for example, one of the companies that I'm very worried about right now is um, hotel, uh, not hotel stocks, um, restaurants. Who knows Dave and Buster's? Dave and Buster, it's play. Look at this going from 48 right now to $4.87. Let's take a look at the percentage drop here. So at a percentage drop, here we are looking at Holy moly, 92%. So, I mean, if a company loses 92% of the value, this is where we have to be really careful that this health crisis with an economic impact is not turning into financial crisis. I don't think we have a financial crisis just yet, but it can happen really, really fast. So let's get rid of this. Let's take a look at some other ones. I mean, you have heard it. Vegas is shut down. So if we take a look at Wynn Resorts, so Wynn Resorts also hit hard here from 140 down to $40. So we have a percent um, decline. If you look at this here of 77%, uh, very similar to MGM that's also operating, as you know, a bunch of casinos in Las Vegas uh, going all the way down here from uh, where are we? 32 to ugh, 83% down to $7, right? I mean, this is when, this is when a stock or when a company is in danger. So um, another one, looking at hotels, just a few more, and then we take a look at the, the overall and what you can do right now. So Marriott down, hit hard here, also down 60, 70%. Uh, if you look at, uh, at the oil stocks, we talked about this, right? Oil stocks like uh, CBX, Chevron here, uh, being hit hard, coming from a, from a high of 120 here going down only, only 56%, but keep this in mind, the overall market is only down 33%. So um, so who's driving up the market? Who is actually in this environment making any money? Now, not too surprising that retail companies, like for example, Walmart right now are killing it. I mean, look at this, Walmart has been jumping up. Why? Because right now everybody is rushing into the stores trying to stock up. Uh, another company right now is uh, Walgreens, WBA, Walgreens Boot Alliance. I mean, they are, look at this, today alone up 6.5%. Uh, we have companies like Kroger, uh, the supermarket chain. Uh, I thought it was, yeah, there it is, uh, KR. Yeah, look at this. They are up from 28 to $36. So as you can see, there's always opportunity in these markets. The question is, which ones should you buy? Now, first of all, let, let's zoom out a little bit for a moment and let's talk about the bigger picture. So the bigger picture right now, this is our main challenge. We have to keep companies alive. These companies, they are not out of business yet. But as you can see, some are down 90% that is getting very, very dangerous. So we must contain the virus and we must find a way to help businesses, large and small. As you know, small businesses are the backbone of America. So now the question is, what should you do? What should you buy? In short, nothing. And here's why. Let me go back to the charts and let me show you what's happening. Right now, oops, there we go. Pretty much everything is down. You see, some, some times people ask me, should I buy gold right now? No, you should not buy gold because look at this. Gold, which should go up. When stocks are crashing, the flight to safety is that gold should go up. Look at this. What did gold do? Gold is plummeting as well. Crude oil today getting hammered another 15%. So crude oil is down. So should you buy right now crude oil stocks or, or gold stocks or gold? No, it's almost like catching a falling knife. The, the only thing that is up like crazy is the so-called VIX. This is the volatility index that is measuring the fear. And as you can see, the VIX right now is as it has levels that we 
haven't seen since 2008. This is showing you how much fear we have in the market right now. So this was in 2018 when we had this short crash. I'm just zooming out here a little bit. Uh, let me go to weekly charts actually. So that you see how high it was at uh, in 2008. Here we go. In 2008, it went all the way to 95. We are almost there yet. So, I mean, everything is down. Now here, as long as the VIX, this volatility index is up that much. Let me just uh, zoom out again. This is where things will remain crazy. We just talked about it, right? So, therefore, here's what I think right now is a smart choice to do. If you are in cash, stay in cash. Keep your powder dry. Now, we, we are trading the binary power spreads. And, and you see, with the binary power spreads, we have made close to 50% since the beginning of the year. I'm just curious, uh, who here is trading these? Uh, leave a comment if you're trading these right now and how you're doing with the binary power spreads that we introduced to you uh, two weeks ago. How, how have you been doing in this craziness? By the way, if uh, for those of you who are interested in this, I'm going to do a special training uh, very, very soon. And I link a description to uh, a link in the description to this special training. But right now, I'm just curious who here is trading the binary power spreads uh, and how are you doing with them? Are you having fun with them? Because in this craziness, that is definitely something to do. Uh, the other thing is consider real estate. I mean, because let me show you something. Let me uh, show you actually. Yesterday, I had a really cool conversation uh, with, uh, with somebody who is considering buying their first house and they were nervous and they say, should we do it right now? Here's what I want to show you. This here is the 30 year fixed mortgage rate in the United States. As you can see right now, mortgage rates are as low as they haven't been in forever, this chart here, which is from the uh, Fed, uh, it's the St. Louis Fed, the uh, St. Louis Federal Reserve. Uh, as you can see, I mean, mortgage rates have never been lower. So what does this mean? Because that's very important. Some people are concerned that the real estate market could crash. However, let me show you this. This here is the uh, S&P case Schiller index of the national home prices. Yes, home prices went down during the 2008 crisis. But uh, remember in 2000, we had, a, we had a, a financial crisis in 2000. See what happened? Nothing. Home prices kept going up. We had a dip. Who remember that we had this dip in the market in 2018, December 2018? Nothing. Real estate prices were going up. Now, why is this and why I believe that right now is a good time to buy real estate? What do you think is happening if mortgage rates are at an all time low? People who haven't been able to afford buying real estate might be able to afford it right now. Yesterday, uh, the couple that I talked to, we did an example. They're right now paying $1,300 in rent. They would get a nicer house and pay less money, probably only $900 in a mortgage because money is cheap right now. So this is why I believe that right now it might be a smart idea to to get cash and think about real estate. So let me come back to you here. I just wanted to show you a little bit the, the bigger picture so that you know what's going on. So but let's talk about the key question. What can you do right now? In short, two words for you. Get ready. And here's how. First, Start learning about trading because the markets will come back to normal. And when they do, there will be fantastic opportunities. Keep in mind, the market takes the stairs up, it crawls up and then it takes the elevator down, but it will go up again. And when you know how to trade options, you will be able to, to not only make 3%, 5%, you'll be able to make probably 30%, 40%, 60% when you know what you're doing. Now, second, line up loans right now, lines of credit, home equity loans, apply for credit right now. Credit is cheap and over the next few weeks, it will be handed out like candy. If you haven't been able to, uh, to get credit earlier, now might be a good time. 
Anyhow, so I wanted to share with you of uh, what's happening here in the market, uh, what I believe you should do. Stay in cash, get ready, okay? And uh, what I personally am doing. So I'm um, just curious, is, is this helpful? Because if it is, uh, give me a thumbs up right now. So just uh, somewhere here, right underneath the video, there's a thumbs up. Give me a quick some th thumbs up and also make sure that you subscribe to the channel because this way you get notified whenever I go live or I release a new video. All right, and we are not done yet because there's one more thing that I want to cover before I go to your questions because I know that there's many questions here right now, but I want to talk about the limit moves here in just a moment. But just right now, um, let me know if this has been helpful thus far. I know that we spend around 30 minutes together and I'm planning to spend another 10, 15 minutes with you because I'm enjoying having a coffee with you and that's what I'm doing right now. is good what's your favorite beverage by the way my favorite mug trade what you see not what you think right trade what you see not what you think so let me actually bring up um, the charts for today so that we can talk about these uh, limit moves okay uh, da, 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 da. good all right, so let's talk about stock market limit down. What are these so-called stock market circuit breaker rules that you might have seen over the past? So first of all, let's jump on the charts right away and let me show you what this means when one of these circuit breakers is tripped. So this is actually what happened today. I'm recording this video here on March 18th. I'm gonna jump to the charts here right now. Uh, this is the Dow Jones. I'm going to jump to a three minute chart. And this is where you see that at some point today, trading was halted right here. Let me see. i use a, a big fat arrow. Oh, let me see if I can turn this around. There we go. Right here. You see that over the day, it was just going sideways. Ting, ting, ting. Like this. So what is happening and what are these stock market limit moves? They have been implemented after the crash in 1987. In 1987, we had the Black Monday where the markets went down 20% in one day. Now, after this, there were some rules implemented that this cannot happen anymore. And here's how it works. So we are looking at the SPX. We are looking at the index uh, that tracks the S&P 500. So whenever the markets are down 7%, from the previous day's close, that's when one of the stock market circuit breakers is tripped. Let me come back to you to full screen for a moment. So down 7%, that is when it is tripped. And what does it mean? It means that trading is halted for 15 minutes. And here's why. So the idea is for 15 minutes, it's being halted that everybody can take a deep breath during these 15 minutes. No trades will take place. You can still place orders, but they will not be executed. This is why you saw the dot, dot, dot. So the first circuit breaker is at 7%, which means that now trading is halted for 15 minutes. After this, if the market keeps plunging and keeps going down 13% from the previous day's close, and again, the reference index is the S&P 500. If it goes down by 13%, trading is halted for another 15 minutes. And then there's a third circuit breaker, and this is if the overall market goes down 20%, then trading is done for the day. So these are the circuit breakers. Now there's one more, and this is for the futures markets. Um, you know that there are futures markets that are trading overnight. So the, the correspondence to the SPX is the E-mini S&P. Now let me show you here a three minute chart or a five minute chart, because this is where you see in the overnight session, we had something similar. Now for the futures markets, in addition to the rules that I just stated, there's one more rule. If at any time in the overnight session before the US markets open, this drops 5%, only 5%, not the seven. If this drops 5%, below the previous day's close, then trading is halted until the regular markets opened. And this is what you see here. This is what happened last night. The, the indices, the, the futures markets were down 
5% and it, they were halted until we started trading this morning. Now let's go back, whether we look at the Dow Jones or some other, you will see that we had these circuit breakers a few times over the past few days. So we had it here on March 16th, which was a Monday, because the markets opened pretty much 8% down, therefore triggering the 7% rule. And as you can see right here, okay, that's where we halted trading for 15 minutes. So thus far, thus far, it hasn't happened yet that we triggered the 7% rule and the 13% rule. Thus far, we only triggered the 7% rule. Here's another example where you see, okay, trading got halted here. Sometimes it is right in the open. Sometimes it is during the day. Let me see if I find another one during the day. Nope. Here's another one during the open. But this is what you see. And you see, sometimes, especially when you're trading, you might be worrying. And, oh, I just realized I have not shown the charts at all. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do through the magic of editing. We will put this in there. So I'm going to make sure that I'm editing the video and that the charts are there so that you see it right away. And then I'm going to send it out. I am so sorry. You have seen me talking. No worries. <laughs> we'll, we'll get this fixed. We'll get this fixed. Anyhow, so these circuit breakers are there to prevent a dramatic crash as we had in 1987, because when the markets tanked 20%, that's when we were in trouble. So that's why, um, that's why we have the circuit breakers. They are there that everybody is taking a deep breath and uh, for a moment just says, okay, it's not as bad as it seems. So let's go back and uh, now let's everybody calm down. And hopefully the idea is that the markets are bouncing a little bit back up. Thought you should know about the stock market uh, limit down and what are the stock market circuit breakers. If this was helpful, uh, then hit like and uh, feel free to share this video with, with anybody who might like it and uh, who can benefit from this. Always appreciate it when you share my videos. All right, so again, this is where I have to give it to Asia and uh, she will have fun editing it. And then I will send you an email when it is there so that you see my charts here together. Um, <laughs> with my comments. Holy moly. Okay. So since we are here live on the screen, let me do the following. Let me take a look at your comments and thank you for those of you uh, who have actually been letting me know that uh, I did not show the charts. <laughs> okay. All right. So a uh, few comments here. Let me go back to the beginning and I appreciate you being here hanging out. So I want to spend another maybe 10 minutes answer your questions and comments, uh, see how I can help you, because I really enjoy having these uh, these coffee with Marcus here with you. Speaking of which, mm, so good. And uh, hope that I can give you, so the purpose of these sessions is, is threefold, right? So first of all, I, I just wanna give you a bigger picture so that you see what is overall going on because especially with the media driving us all crazy and doing panic I want to just zoom out and sometimes say you know what this is what it is and yes it is bad yes it can get worse but it will also get better secondly I want to educate you on a few things that you might not know right that you might not have been aware of uh, because I believe the more information you have the the better decisions you can make of what you should do. And, and third, I just love hanging out with you. And in times like this, I think it is important that uh, we, we just stay in touch so that, uh, I mean, I can let you know what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, and hopefully can help you navigate these difficult times. Okay, um, so, Okay, Shadowstar says, oops, I did not, there we go. Um, so let's see, um, Shadowstar says that you started trading uh, with it uh, Sunday night and I'm up by a large amount now. So I assume that you're referring to the binary power spreads. They are fascinating. Again, I'm gonna post a link in the description uh, team, do we already have a link uh, for the training that I'm going to do? Because I'm going to do a training on Sunday night. And uh, so, and if you want, I'll invite you to trade it live with me next week. So March 23rd through 26th. 
So if you have not learned about the power spreads yet and you would like to be part of this and uh, would, would like to learn more, I'm doing a special training and the team is posting the link here either right now or let me know and then I will post it here in just a moment. Um, Jared, it has come as a website. Um, what is it? Is it Rockwell? trading.com slash spread if you could just post it in the uh in the comments here right now that was good okay alvaro is asking is it a good idea to play landlord isn't it risky if you get nasty renters yes and here this is why i used to have 12 single family homes and then i switched to apartment complexes because with apartment complexes it is easier to rotate uh, renters through now again this is for Texas. If you live in California, if you want to get rid of a bad renter, that's probably not a good idea. So I highly recommend investing in multifamily units. And uh, I already took some notes that many of you were interested in this. So in one of the upcoming Coffee with Marcus in these sessions, I will show you what exactly I'm doing and uh, so that you can follow along and see if it makes sense for you. So, but but great question. So we'll, we'll get to this. Uh, don't jump into anything just yet. Um, because we, we have a few more weeks or even months uh, for this opportunity here. Okay, good. So John is asking, how easy is it to trade the power spreads? You still have to trade in the right direction. No, that is the great thing, John. So the way how we have constructed this spread is as a hedge. So yes, we are betting on one direction. And if it doesn't work out, we still make money. Less money? but we still make money. So um, join, join me for the special training where I can show you exactly what we do. Yes, you can still lose money. And I show you in what scenario. It's basically if the market closes exactly where it opened, which is very unlikely, especially these days. You see how crazy the markets are moving up and down. Anyhow, okay, great, great, great. Uh, so do you need to have good knowledge of options trading in order to do this? Not at all. Here, here's the deal. I can teach you how to trade these power spreads in probably 30 minutes. That's all you need. Uh, really, if you have absolutely no experience whatsoever, uh, I can show you how to do it in 30 minutes. And that's what I want to do in this special training. So make sure that you join me as soon as we post the link. It's now in the comments. There should be a link somewhere. Uh, my team has posted it there. Okay. Um, Good, good, good. Uh, Alpasa is asking, with the power spreads, there's no need to know about the options or the direction of the market. Exactly, exactly. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, so John is asking, after such a big sell-off, people will get back in at the end of the day, assuming stocks will go up the next day. See, that's a good point. One of the challenges is that right now, people sometimes have this, this thinking that, hey, the markets are oversold. And I agree, they're probably oversold, but right now it's like catching a falling knife. See, uh, let me go just quickly go back here to the charts for just a moment um, that you can see this. Uh, I need to push this button. There we go. Uh, and I want to go to the to the Dow Jones and I want to go to a daily chart. You see, right now it, it's really trying to catch a falling knife. If you want to do this, why did I go all the way back there? There we go. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I would not bet that the markets are going up tomorrow. They might just continue dropping. So I think it's uh, it's really risky if you try to do this. My advice, don't just wait. Okay, good, good, good. All right, fantastic. One can appreciate the feedback. Great friend trying us for progress in life. Though I'm zero ND, new to this business, try to listen. And yes, you will. You will someday be successful. I'm, I'm convinced. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, John is asking another great question. Do you think we will have a V-shaped recovery? No, I don't think so. So V-shaped recovery means we're going down and right back up. We do this when we have smaller dips. Smaller dips, I mean like 8%, 10%. So if you have a dip of 10%, then we snap right back up. But if you have a dip here of 30, 40%, this is when it takes months or years before this is happening. <laughs> seems like my cat is jumping around here i don't know if you can hear her <laughs> in the background what do you want be nice you want to say hi to everybody come here 
Look, here's everybody. There's everybody. Look, see this? <laughs> That's my cat. She's called Lily. Anyhow, okay. So you be nice right now, and I will. I'll take care of you in just a moment. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So. So there's some great questions. I mean, many of you are asking the questions. Do we have to go long and Nasdaq now because they are cheap? They're cheap, but it can get cheaper. So I would not try to catch the bottom uh, because it's super dangerous. People already thought a few weeks ago we had a bottom. People thought on Monday after the stock market dropped 13% we had a bottom and we didn't. So I would really wait. You know that I'm a big fan of the indicators, right? So look at the indicators here. And uh, I want to see that these start pointing up. Does it mean that I miss a little bit of the move? Yes. And that is okay. Trust me on this one. You don't want to jump too into early. You might get slaughtered. Okay. Good, good, good. Megan says, I sound like PewDiePie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've never listened to any videos of PewDiePie. So I know that he exists. I know that he is... Isn't he from Scandinavia somewhere? Uh, I think, not quite sure. So, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, John says, this is one of the biggest economic shitstorms ever. N not quite sure. I mean, we weathered already some of these. I mean, we had this in 2008. We had it in 2000. We had it in 1987. We had it. I mean, we know how to go through stock market crashes. The key here right now is really to contain this virus so that we can all go back to normal, that restaurants open again, hotels open again, that we start flying across the country. And you see, this is the main difference between the financial crisis and what we have right now. Right now, everybody is asked to stay home, which makes sense, right? Uh, so this is why not many people are flying right now and airlines are being hurt. We have a travel ban from Europe. All this is good, trying to contain the virus. And it is temporary. You see, this is where in 2008 it was permanent, uh, right? And right now we just need to make sure that companies are not shutting down permanently, that this really remains a temporary thing here. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh, I'm glad to see everybody. I'm looking through the comments right now that the spreads are going well, that the binary power spreads are going well. Eric says uh, up $180 for the week. Andrea said it's doing fine. Uh, Monica says I did demo and start, just started doing real money. Wendell, uh, Wendell says up $200 for the week. Great. And I know that this is when I say these numbers. Most of you probably are starting with a two to three thousand dollar account. So being up two hundred dollars means that probably you're up ten percent. Does that sound about right? Five to ten percent in a market like this, that is excellent because trust me, right now accounts are getting shredded to pieces. All right. Pam says, I like the old background back. Really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lone Wolf says. Who who would dislike this video? Oh, don't you worry about it. I uh, it seems that I I have my my fair share of people who dislike the video, uh, which is okay. As long as you need see if you like it, just shut them shut them up. Should I say this on YouTube? I think it's fair, right? Uh, by just saying like it. The more likes we have, then nobody pays attention to the three, two, three, five, ten people who say. Bleh. If you like it, that's all I care about. I'm doing this video for you, not for the ones who dislike it. I'm doing it for you who you like it. <laughs> okay, anyhow. Good, 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 good. Okay, so good to see you. Uh, all right. So I see a bunch of great comments here. I uh, appreciate see that you're making money with the binary power spreads. That is fantastic. I just want to see if there's a, maybe a few questions. Uh, that I can that I can answer Lyft uh, we can take a look at Lyft and see how how these guys are doing I mean Lyft and Uber are being hit hard right now because uh, as people are not traveling and as people are not going to work I mean here we go Lyft uh, let's see how much they are down so Lyft here all the way from uh, oh, it's actually not oh, 75% sorry I was looking at the the dollars so 75% from $54 to $16 Uber probably probably pretty similar. Let me just get rid of this. Uh, but don't don't buy those yet. But these might be good opportunities coming up. But uh, not right now. Okay. 
so Uber, yeah, the same going from 42 to 15, uh, probably down here also, what, 75% or something like this. I mean, this is where we need to see uh, 70%. That's where we need to make sure that this is just temporary so that these companies do not go permanently out of business. Okay, great questions here, but we can definitely look at, uh, at stocks. Okay, um, so Shadow Stalker, is that your name? Are there any plans to implement touch brackets with the power spreads? No, um, and there's a reason for it. We go in depth into it in the in the training, and I'll I'll post the link here um, in the question. So uh, Tab says if right now PowerX Optimizer, uh, which is the software that I personally use, triggers a buy, should we still go ahead? Right now, I personally. I'm staying on the sidelines when it comes to stocks and options. I am trading the power spreads. They are fun. But right now, as long as the VIX, the volatility index is that high, uh, or uh, also as long as the markets are as crazy and irrational, I would wait with stocks and options here for a moment. Because as you have seen, stocks right now can move 10, 15%. So it, it's almost like putting your trying to put your hand in a, in a wood chipper and hope that you're not getting hurt. It's not going to happen. You are getting hurt. And so uh, just just wait a few more weeks. We'll, we'll be just fine. There will be plenty of opportunities. OK. So uh, Derek is asking, just can't find the question here right now. What kind of account do you need to trade uh, the, the spreads? Um, as little as $1,600. So um, $1,600 is just fine. Ideal would be $3,200. But if you have anywhere between, let's say, $1,600 and $3,200, you, you'll be just fine. So if you have a, a little bit cash aside right now, uh, it's it's a good thing to, to get started with this. And again, just register, I see here at uh, power, no, rockwelltrading.com slash spreads. So that's what it is all about. Okay, good, good, good. And uh, Junior says... It is easier to hire one manager to take care of a whole apartment building instead of 12 single families too. That is correct. Uh, right now I'm having 96 doors. Uh, so in my apartment complexes, there's 96 units and it's definitely easier uh, for, for one manager to take care of that than, uh, than having 12 single family homes. Absolutely. Okay. So um, I see that some of you say there's nothing in the comments yet. So let me actually write it down it is rockwell oops i just need to find there we go it is geez it's not that easy to write it down here apparently as i want to so okay rockwelltrading.com slash spreads that's where you can uh where you can register for the special training i hope and I'm doing this also here on YouTube Live. So make sure that you're subscribing to this channel because it'll pop up as a YouTube Live. And uh, and this way, you will get notified from YouTube. Okay. Alvaro <laughs> says, do I hear a cat? Yep. She got quiet right now. So she was here with me in the studio. She was quietly sleeping until she woke up. <laughs> okay. All right, good, good, good. I think <laughs> the somebody says the internet is made for cats. Yes, so now I also have my own cat video. So there we go. Uh, we'll probably cut this out. Asia will make do something funny. Asia is my video editor, uh, so she'll probably do something funny uh, with the cat. <laughs> Pretty sure we can do that. Okay, <laughs> thanks for all the comments. Okay, good. Um, Dolan started, uh, said uh, that you started with as little as $500 trading the uh, the power spreads. Uh, you can. I, I would recommend a little bit more. I uh, see Sh Shadow Star started with $1,500. I think $1,500 is a great amount to get started with. Okay. Good, good, good. Ken is asking, really ready to jumping uh, hard, wondering how you think the cruise line market will recover by this time next year. So you see, um, it's very important. And this will be my last comment uh, because I know that it's getting long. Uh, so there is two types of fear that is tra uh, driving traders right now. And they're both very dangerous. The first is the so-called FOMO, fear of missing out. Do not fall for this. I have heard of too many people who try to jump into this market hoping to catch a bottom 
and then we had another 13% drop or another 10% drop. So do not fear of missing out. There will be plenty, I promise. There will be plenty of opportunities right now. Do not try to buy stocks yet. That's my opinion. Do with it whatever you want. I mean, you're an adult. You can do whatever you want. But uh, you don't have to. <laughs> so uh, the other fear is the fear of uncertainty, right? And this is what we have right now. We don't know what's happening. And honestly, um, whether cruise lines, hotels, airlines, whether they will do well depends on how quickly we can contain the virus. If this uh, can be contained in the next few weeks, great. If it really takes until July, August, as some people say, I fear that some people, some companies might be out of business because we cannot... Uh, keep companies alive for months, we will be able to do it for the next few weeks. So that is really the important thing. All right. It seems that Lily needs either some food or water. So let me take care of Lily. I will be back with the coffee with life. You see, with everything that is going on here, all the craziness, I think I'll be back here on Friday uh, so that we can wrap up the week together. So um, just to make sure that you subscribe here on YouTube to this channel so that you get a notification whenever I go live again. Make sure that you like the video. I'm really having a blast being here with you, answering as many of your questions as I can, having a coffee with you. So let's do it again. Let's do it in two days from now on Friday. And uh, until then, stay safe, stay healthy, okay? Do the right thing. And uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Okay, have a great rest of the afternoon and take care.